Clarence Leonidas Fender, better known as Leo Fender, founder of the Fender Electric Guitar Company, is likely not one of the first figures that comes to mind when you think about futurists. However, if we look at the work of Leo Fender, the inventor and electronics engineer, and examine the issues of his time and how they shaped his vision, there is a compelling case to be made. Leo Fender is a futurist because he identified a need for an improved version of a technological device and in doing so precipitated a paradigm shift within guitar design and amplification that would change the face of music in the decades that followed. Furthermore, his technological contribution was truly timeless as the solid body electric guitar has yet to see another significant innovation since. Born August 10, 1909 in Anaheim, California, Leo was fascinated with electronics from a young age. Inspired by his uncle's workshop where he spent a considerable amount of time as a teenager tinkering with old radio components, Leo opened a radio repair shop in 1938. Before long, his customers began bringing in other electronics for repair, such as PA systems and external guitar pickups. It just occurred to me, this would be a great place to stick a quick explanation of exactly what guitar pickups are. Picture an acoustic guitar. It has a large hollow body that amplifies the notes being played in the immediate space around the instrument. Now say you wanted to amplify that sound to an entire concert hall. This presents a problem, doesn't it? Now imagine a small electronic device that can transform the vibrations a guitar produces and convert them into an electrical signal that could be amplified through a loudspeaker. This is essentially a pickup. And when another well-known guitar manufacturer, one that is not the focus of this slide cast, took a pickup and fastened it to the outside of an acoustic guitar, it created the first commercially successful hollow body electric. After repairing numerous external pickups for his customers, Leo identified a major problem. Due to the empty space within a guitar's hollow body, musicians would experience a great deal of feedback at the expense of volume and clarity. This is where Leo's futurist thinking originated. A common characteristic among futurists, Leo identified a prospective problem well before any of his contemporaries and began working on its solution. Approaching the problem purely from an inventor and engineer's perspective, Fender set out to build an entirely new design that would minimize feedback while maximizing volume and clarity, the solid body electric guitar. His goal was not to change the face of music or become one of the world's most successful instrument manufacturers. In fact, he didn't even know how to play guitar. He was simply an inventor who envisioned a better future for musicians. His expertise as a designer and craftsman was matched only by his success as a producer and manufacturer. From the Fender Broadcaster prototype in 1948 to his subsequent rebranding as the now iconic Fender Telecaster in 1950, Leo Solabody was the first of its kind to achieve commercial success. By 1954, Leo was already working on his next design, the Fender Stratocaster. While the two pickup Telecaster had become world renowned for its clarity and lack of feedback, the Stratocaster's three pickups were much hotter or prone to feedback. Although the Strat's potential for feedback was higher than the Tele's, the pickup system offered more options sonically, giving musicians the choice between a cleaner or more graceful tone, or a more edgier and grittier one, depending on their preferred style of play. The fact that there existed a choice between a clean and gritty guitar tone was incredibly important, especially to blues musicians whose improvisation and soloing techniques could cut above the rhythm section and sound more pronounced and present in the overall mix. The soloing techniques and song structures of the blues genre that would serve as the foundation for rock and roll would have emerged much slower if not for Fender's ingenuity. Leo's Stratocaster model also featured the first tremolo system ever seen on a guitar. You know that thing you wiggle when you play Guitar Hero that gives you the extra points? That's a whammy bar. The whammy bar screws into the tremolo system where the strings pass through. When the whammy bar is moved at the same time as the note is being played, a vibrato effect is created. It sounds like this. On August 18th, 1969, Jimi Hendrix took the stage at Woodstock for what went down in music history as one of the most inspired rock and roll performances of all time. His instrument of choice? A 1968 Olympic white Fender Stratocaster. What followed was a legendary display of distorted guitar tones, grittiness, and feedback that by that time had become the epitome of the genre. The performance was only made possible by Leo Fender's technological innovations that went into the Stratocaster's design process 15 years earlier, back when everyone's parents would have been offended by quote-unquote all of that noise. Although his initial vision was a guitar entirely free of feedback, his drive to generate solutions for tomorrow ended up redefining what audiences considered to be music. Walk into any music shop today and you'll see a Fender guitar. In fact, you'll likely see an entire wall of Fenders depending on the size of the store. What you won't see is some futuristic carbon fiber body 20 pickup space age number hanging next to a Telecaster. This is because Leo's solid body electrics are timeless, both in their design and in their usage. Upon inspection of a Telecaster from 1950, the year the model went into production, one from 1983, the approximate midpoint in time between the first production date and today, and a model produced last year, there are only subtle differences. In 66 years, the design has not changed dramatically because it was so well thought out by Fender in its early stages of development. 
Although the Telecaster may have changed aesthetically, musicians have not yet met a problem that the guitar wasn't originally designed to solve, be it a sound-related or physical playing issue. There's been no need, from a sonic perspective, to introduce an outrageous number of pickups. Two have always been sufficient. The timelessness of Leo's design and its ability to continue to meet the needs of players are reflected in the solid body simplicity. Additionally, there has been no alternative application for the electric guitar aside from its use by musicians. There have been no attempts to use a guitar to, say, develop a more elaborate system of Morse code that uses tones instead of dots and dashes. They don't make very good tables either. There's virtually no need to change the guitar's design dramatically. Just as a futurist writer hopes her ideas will stand the test of time, Fender's contribution of the solid body electric guitar has been unchallenged by a better concept or model for as long as it has been in existence. And looking forward, it does not appear that there will be a need for a large scale change anytime soon. Through its timelessness, Fender's designs are truly a futurist contribution. Leo Fender is a futurist because he identified a need and created a solution that not only resulted in a better design, but also had revolutionary implications for how audiences think about and define music. Even over 60 years later, his contribution remains timeless, and his line of solid body electric guitars continue to enjoy iconic status. Leo passed away on March 21, 1991, but his legacy continues to live on through the designs he contributed and the musicians who continue to play them. By applying an inventor's mindset to a relatively insignificant problem like noisy guitar pickups, Fender unintentionally changed the face of music and created a better future for guitarists around the world.